Hello everybody, it's the Warm, and welcome back to Steins Gate. Today we're going on a little trip with our pal, Mr. Braun, Mr. Tenoji. And we are apparently going to visit the former home of a one Hashida Suzu. So yes, as we learned last time, she was able to get to the past. Uh, but unfortunately, she still died around the same time. Uh, of course, you know, small mercies. She did not kill herself, but she did die from some vague sickness. So... We're, we're still not sure exactly what she has been able to do with the time she got. What we do know is that... Mayuri was not killed. Or just died in some cosmic way. Uh, or, you know, some strange way. And Moeka has not attacked our group. Those are two pretty huge things that have changed. So I'm, at the moment, thinking that whatever Suzuha did, it was enough to change that. But I'm not... Well, I guess I should just wait until we find out, right? Because presumably, we're going to learn a little bit about what went on. So... A short intro today, let's just go ahead and start this up and see what we can find out. Tenoji closes up shop and we head off toward his house. From Truo Dori, we head to the station. Head toward the station, even. I scan the Akiba scenery as we walk. Moe stores are still nowhere to be found on this world line. After a little hesitation, I look up at Rati Khan. It's gone. The satellite has vanished. All that's left is the hole it made when it arrived in this time. When did the satellite disappear? Uh, about five days ago? You never know what's going to happen, huh? Which means Suzuha left before it rained. Like Tenoji said, his house is closer than expected. We take the train to the next station, Okachimachi, Okachimachi, and then walk for about five minutes to a quiet residential area. This old, one-story house is where Suzuha once lived. I walk up to the front of the house, and there I see a familiar sight. Is that old... old mountain bike there? Yeah. Suzuha's bicycle. For a moment, I can see her there, squatting beside the bicycle. But the mountain bike Suzuha rode to the Braun Tube workshop was shiny and new. Now it's old and covered in rust. Suzu-san loved that old thing. Yeah, and did you never... Did you, know, did you never notice that the, uh, the part-timer you hired had an extremely similar mountain bike? Hmm. Even when she couldn't ride it anymore, she'd still polish it every week. It's been sitting there for ten years. Couldn't throw it away. I've maintained it as best I could, but I guess nothing lasts forever. 
I gently put my hand on the seat. It's warm from sitting out in the sun. I suppose that for the few days Suzuha was in Akiba, this bicycle existed in two places at the same time. The house isn't as messy inside as I expected, considering the state of the Brontu workshop. I guess that chipmunk keeps the place clean. Oh, of course, of course you're gonna, of course you're gonna flash that image in, in front of me. A wave of nausea hits me as I recall what Nai did at Ochenomizu Station. But I tell myself that that, that was just an accident myself that was just an accident. Besides, that incident has already been undone. Tenoji Nai has done nothing wrong. Next to the living room is a child's room. There's a child's study desk and a red backpack on the floor. Nai isn't here. Which reminds me, Tenoji's daughter visits the workshop often, but not once have I seen his wife. He couldn't have married Suzuha, could he? I mean, she should have been a lot older than him when it, they met. But, as they say, love knows no bounds. Hmm. I wonder what really happened. I don't know how I'd feel if those two were married. That would mean Daru is Tenoji's father-in-law. Actually, that would be kind of interesting. I turn to the Buddhist altar to pay my respects to Suzuha. There's no picture of her, so there's no way to know what Hashida Suzu looked like at the age of 44. I make an offering of incense to her, then look around the house again. This is the house Suzuha lived in after leaping to 1975. <laughs> When Suzusa, when Suzusan and I first met, we were neighbors. For some reason, Tenoji offers me a beer. When I decline, he shakes his head and starts drinking it himself. I was born and raised in Europe, you know. Wow. No, I did not know that, and I. Would never have guessed that either. Huh? Psst. Is that a joke? Got a problem? I'll have you know my English and French are perfect. He really doesn't look like someone who lived abroad. I guess you can't judge a book by its cover. My parents died about 15 years ago. That's when I came back to Japan. Or, I guess I should say, I came to Japan for the first time. Suzu-san was living alone next door. She looked after me when I had nowhere else to turn. All right, now's my chance. If I'm gonna ask, it's now or never. And you got married? Huh? Married? Suzu-san. To Susu san? Ahoka. You hi. <laughs> you. I knew she'd never marry a guy like him. She was a pretty stoic lady. Didn't have much of a social life. But she treated me well. When 
俺のタバコの不始末が原因だから自業自得なんだが。My house burned down about one year after I moved here. It was my smoking that caused the fire, so I deserved it. But still. そん時に全財産なくした俺をこの家で下宿させてくれたんだ。After I had lost everything, she let me come live here with her. それだけじゃねえ。工房のあるあの大日山ビルな。あれもともとスズさんの持ち物だったんだぞ。That's not all. The Ohiyama building, where the workshop's at? Was originally Suzu san's property. You know, I, I thought about this previously, and I don't think. I, I still don't think. I don't think this is the case. It just. The thought briefly popped into my head, and it, it just popped in, in my head again, so I thought I'd bring it up. Now that we know that. Well, certainly, Suzuha. Suzuha is one of a few parties, I think. That know what goes down in the in the future gadget laboratory. And so the thought that popped into my head was okay, we know there's a fiber optic cable under there. Someone had to set that up. And, and you know, the obvious suspect was CERN. But after a while, I'm not sure that made as much sense. I mean, I'd still say they're more likely. But. You know, now that we know that Suzuha actually owned the property, we have another suspect, I think. So Suzu Suzuha could have, you know, made preparations like that. But I'm not sure that.、Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think that works out either because, you know, for all she. For all the time she had to prepare, we have to remember. She wouldn't have any documentation, you know, so. And it's not like she was able to.、Uh, what doesn't seem like, considering her living conditions here, that she was able to garner a huge amount of wealth or something like that. But who knows? Who knows? It could just be she was lying low. But. Because, I mean, I, I, I just. I, I really believe that that fiber optic cable has to be the. It has to be the design of someone time traveling.、Um, but I'm basically I'm keeping my, my, I'm keeping my eye out for what Suzuha may have done, because clearly she's made preparations, even if we didn't get an IBN 5100, right? <gasps> what? What? おかげで俺はブラウン管工房を構えることができたってわけだ。She sold it to me for cheap. Thanks to her that the Braun Tube Workshop exists. I'm curious what the story would have been before Suzuha went back in time. Because clearly it would have been different beforehand. You could say she saved my life. Arutogi Nanda te emo yukarimone no ni conna ni yoku stegurum descarte. Kita o t o a n d a It, you know, I should have realized this much sooner. <laughs> wow, th th I just、uh, had a face palm moment here. I should have realized this、uh, the first time Suzuha went back in time. Of course, she's gonna treat <laughs> Tenoji well. He, he used to be her boss. Man, imagine that meeting. Suza, or Tenoji shows up on her doorstep one day. <laughs> she must have known, of course, that. Oh, hey. You're gonna own that,、uh, that workshop. So clearly, that must have been part of the plan, right? She, she didn't want to mess with history. So, of course, she was going to、uh, sell it to him on the cheap. But that doesn't mean that, that doesn't take away from the nice gesture it was for him. Once I asked her why she treated me so well, it wasn't like we were related or anything. But she just smiled and said, 
巡り巡って人は誰かに親身にしてもらうことになってるだから君もいずれ誰かに親身にしてあげなさいってな We all depend on someone's kindness at some point in our lives When the time comes you pass the gift along なんだか不思議な人だったぜ預言者みたいにこれから起きる出来事をピタリピタリと言い当てたりしてな She was kind of mysterious. She seemed to know exactly how things were going to happen, like a prophet. <gasps> Who's it, huh? That was her way of repaying. That was probably her way of repaying Tenoji for looking after her, even if it was, was just for 10 days. Yeah, that's,、uh, that's what I was thinking. And so it came full circle. I don't know if you can see it. It's a small world, huh? Never thought I'd meet someone else who knew her. So, that's just a matter of time. All right, wait here a sec. Tenoji goes into the child's room next door, then returns and places an object on the table. <gasps> Is it going to be. I'm guessing it's going to be the divergence measuring device. Oh! Yes. It's Suzuha's divergence meter. Before the world line changed, it was in the lab. But on this world line, Suzuha brought the meter with her to 1975. It's been in this house for 35 years. The tubes read 0.409431%. Divergence has changed, just like Suzuha said. This proves that my magic eye, reading Steiner, does indeed allow me to perceive changes in the world line, or to the world line. But what does 0.409431% mean?、Uh, I believe Titor said that it was. It was kind of arbitrary. It was a change from the original quote unquote timeline. So, presumably, there's a timeline where a certain Okabe Rintaro made it. And that would have been 0.0%. And then.、Uh, As changes happen to the world lines, or as Suzuha goes back in time, and other Okabes are sending d emails and doing other things, and causing changes to, to various world lines, that is showing. Well, divergence. It's showing the amount of divergence from that original world line. So, it's arbitrary, but yeah. But I mean, this number, it seems very low in the grand scheme of things. It's not even 1%, you know? I recall what Suzuha said. But I, I guess 1% is all you need in the grand scheme of things. I mean, if we're talking about you know, infinite possibilities or something. Then, yeah, 1% would be、uh, significant in that sense. When the meter reads over 1%, you've made it to the beta world line. Beta world line? Is that right? I thought it was. I thought it was a tractor field. I thought it was Alpha Attractor Field and Beta Attractor Field. Okay, I, I'm probably just misremembering.、Uh, does that mean I'm still on the Alpha World Line? You know, <laughs> just from that, just from what I just said, I'm feeling. I feel like it's going to be the case that by the end of this game, I still have. Little to no idea what's actually going on here. <laughs> I just had a premonition.、Um, 
I mean, hopefully I can understand it better as time goes on, but we'll see. Do you know what that number means? Because I sure don't. All I know is that it hasn't changed a bit these ten years. But you know... When Suzu-san was on her deathbed, she used to stare at that meter for hours. She used to stare at that meter, talking to herself. Is this the old number? The new number? Did it work? Did it change? Stuff like that. Day in and day out. It hurt to watch. I touched the device. Suzuha. In my heart, I reach out to the girl who died ten years ago. To the girl who will be born seven years from now. To the girl who crossed time to save the future. Suzuha. Thanks to you, my Yuri is safe. The divergence has changed. But we haven't yet reached your ultimate goal. One percent divergence. Once that is achieved... The future you wished for will become reality. I will carry on your fight, Suzuha. I promise. Suddenly I realize that I'm crying. Tenoji stares at me for a moment, then puts his giant hand on my shoulder. Uh, that was rough. Yeah, the, uh... You know, I was... It felt like we were just kind of sort of moving along, talking about things. You know, it wasn't particularly a sad scene at, at any point, but once we got to here... Yeah, that, that hurt to read. I mean, once again, she didn't... I would say she definitely... She had a better fate here than her, what she, than her previous one. But that's still pretty dang rough. You have to imagine, for 35 years, she was... Well, no, it would have been 25 years. For 25 years... I'm sure she made her preparations. I'm sure she tried to get things right. But at the end, she could never really be sure if, if any of her efforts would amount to anything. And of course... This is the world line where we severed our bonds. So, she didn't have the thoughts of her friends to keep her company. All she had was her devotion to the mission. Yeah, I'm sure it did hurt to watch. Rest in peace, Suza. Hope we'll get to see you again one day. Mayuri comes out of the ticket gate and walks up to me with a leisurely stride. Tutoru. <laughs> 
I didn't think you'd come all the way to the station to pick me up. Mayushi is surprised. I wouldn't want my hostage to get away. Yeah, me neither. So Mayushi's really happy. I don't quite understand. But whatever. Mayuri flashes a carefree smile, then walks ahead of me, almost skipping. So, what's in the bag? Mr. Braun gave it to me. It's a device that can measure the divergence of world lines. Wow, that sounds amazing. What's a world line? I smile wryly. Yeah, of course, they never got the the, the d explanation from Suzuha. <laughs> or wait, were, was Mayuri there for that? I can't remember. She might not have been there for that. It might have just been Karisu with us. Mayuri, you really are a dummy. What am I doing? After I left Tenoji's house, I called Mayuri to ask when she would arrive at Akiba. Then I went to the station to pick her up. Anxiety still smolders in my heart. We managed to survive Friday the 13th, the worst day of my life. But that doesn't guarantee our safety forever. It's entirely possible for Moika to attack now, on the afternoon of the 14th. Maybe I'm being overprotective, but I still can't shake the image of Mayuri's death from my mind. I don't ever want to have to go through that again. Mayuri, I'm not going to be able to get to Akiba. I'm not going to be able to get to just a thought, Mayuri. But don't you think you should stop coming to Akiba for a while? At least until Komima ends? No response. I look to the side. <laughs> Mayuri! Panicked, I scan the area and catch sight of her wandering toward a newly opened shaved ice, to sa ice, sa ice stand. Not iced sand. That dits. Can't she tell how worried I am? So, you're the devoted type, huh? Krisu is glaring at me with an iced coffee in her hand. We're in the lab, which appears to have become her second home. Aren't you leaving soon? What's that supposed to mean? Sitting at the computer, searching for intel on the IBM 5100 via at channel. I still don't know where it is. I went to Yanabayashi Shrine this morning, but alas, it wasn't there. Suzuha promised to get one of us. Suzuha promised to get one of us. One to us, somehow. Her gift to us from 1975. Without it, we can't hack into CERN's database, meaning we can't achieve divergence over 1%. All of a sudden, you're treating Mayuri like a princess. Today, you went to the station to meet her. You taste tested her lunch, and then you held her hand all the way back to the lab. Hey, Prisu, I have a question. Where are we on the time leap machine? Did we make it? And also, did we have that whole discussion where we decided to make it public? Because that's kind of important. <laughs> Okarin really loves Mayushi. Did she have to tell Krisu of all people? 
Mayuri looks so carefree as she stuffs her cheek cheeks with takoyaki. I'm pretty sure she's smiling not because of my love, but because of takoyaki's deliciousness. Typical Mayuri. Is that an admission there, Kabe? I mean, clearly we we already understand the depths of his feelings for her. Although, exactly what those feelings mean, I think, can be up for discussion. But of course we know just how much he feels about her. But it seems a bit weird that he sort of just comes out and says it like that. But seriously, did you have to tell Karisu? So, what's the deal? I don't follow. Are you a couple or what? I've been meaning to ask. Do we look like a couple? You see, everyone, Risu is one of the... Well, how could you say it? He's one of the modern types. That's one way I've heard it described. And there's also another certain word that can describe what kind of uh, archetype she is embodying right now. I think you're all pretty... <laughs> pretty well cooled on the subject. So I'll leave it be, because it seems... <laughs> Well, it speaks for itself. Just what sort of delusions does this girl have? You know, Okarin and Mayushi have been friends since we were little. Okay. I think it's Mayushi's really happy now. Don't talk with your mouth full. So, you're not a couple. W well, of course. No one would willingly date Okabe, after all. Yes, you see, this is an ancient archetype. My friends. In olden days, they would say something like, The lady doth protest too much, methinks. And uh, things of that nature. <laughs> Christina, you disappoint me. Huh? What the hell are you talking about? You have finally revealed your true nature. I saw how your eyes lit up at the first hint of romance. You're nothing but a filthy mainstream girl. I bet you like to eat chocolate with your girlfriends and giggle about the latest celebrity love affair. Absurd. This lad has no need of the puppies and flowers in your head. Why don't you tell her how you really feel, Okabe? <laughs> it feels strange to be spewing this Chunibyo nonsense again after what I've been through. Ugh. Is my innocence lost forever? What the hell are you talking about, you self-proclaimed mad scientist Chunibyo nutcase? Ah, uh, it's been a long time since I argued with Chrisu like this too. The thought brings a sudden pang of loneliness. After failing to save Mayuri, I sought help from this genius girl. Even though her words were at times harsh, she supported and encouraged me to the end. But now, 
all that has vanished, along with the time we spent with Suzuha. Thank you for your help, Kurisu. Silently give her my sincere gratitude. Yeah, we severed all those bonds. <sighs> I finish typing on the X68000's keyboard and sigh, turning, or then turn to the divergence meter sitting on the shelf. The display reads 0.409431%. What does that mean? The world is like this piece of yarn. Countless possible world lines exist side by side, branching out to infinity. When the meter reads over 1%, you've made it to the beta world line. You escape the alpha attractor field and reach the beta world line, and the result will change. Okay, now you're now you're using them interchangeably. Stop confusing me, game. Are we talking about world lines or attractor fields? Those interchangeable things or not? What do we? <laughs> why are you messing with me? Or is the beta world line just? Okay, wait. Or do you mean? Uh, are you saying? Okay, I, no, th this might make sense. Al Al you've escaped the attra alpha attractor field into a beta world line, which is presumably within the beta attractor field, I think, is what that is saying. So yeah, I think, I think that's fine. Uh, yes, reach 1% divergence and you'll save Sheena Mayuri, which is an interesting thing to remember considering that Mayuri is okay right now. Then, does that mean I haven't saved her yet? Divergence is still less than 1%. Is the world still converging on Mayuri's death? No, it can't be. It can't be. I mean, nothing happened yesterday. Mayuri's here safe and sound. So nothing will happen to her, nothing. I want to believe that, but the doubt within my heart is growing thick and black. And here's a crazy idea that I just had. Why don't we send Moeka a text? What's she up to right now? I'm, I'm really curious. You know, since she she hasn't been raiding us. Is she still a lab mem? <laughs> I think she must be, considering how far back the, the last email was. It was still pretty recent, all things considered. I can hardly think about anything else right now. No matter how hard I stare at it, the number on the meter doesn't change a digit. So far, Reading Steiner has only activated after we sent past changing d -mails. What about when I time leap? The vertigo I feel when I time leap might be caused by Reading Steiner. Or maybe it's just a side effect of the memory transfer. It's impossible to know. Is it, though? Pretty sure we've seen the divergence meter multiple times after we've time leaped. Maybe only one time. But I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure for all the times we were time leaping, we stayed on the same world line, which was point three something something percent. It's impossible to know. In any case, I've prepared for the worst. I've already set the Time Leap Machine's timer to send my memories three hours into the past. Okay, so we do have the Time Leap Machine. I, I thought we did, but it's good to have that confirmed. And again, what was... Uh, do we still have a plan to make it to go public, or what? 
And with Daru's help, I found a remote for the 42-inch CRT downstairs. Oh, that's helpful. Our previous phone wave named Subject to Change Experiments made a hole in the floor. Instead of fixing the hole, I made it bigger. The 42-inch CRT is right under the hole, so if I point the remote at the hole and press the power button, the TV turns on. Now, should things go wrong, I can time leap at a moment's notice. And I also have future gadget number four, mode snake on hand in case of an emergency. Okabe. Chrisu enters the development room. Time leap machine no jikken wa shinai nja nakatta no? Okay, so we did have the discussion. Didn't you say we weren't going to experiment with the time leap machine? Moshimo no taki no tame da. This is just in case. Moshimo de? In case what? I don't want to answer that. I keep praying that my fears will not be realized. It's okay. Everything will be okay. They didn't attack yesterday, so they won't attack today. At the very least, we've changed Mayuri's fate. But still, I can't help but pray. Please let Mayuri be safe. Please don't let anything happen. And of course... That means something's going to happen. My prayers go unanswered. Of course. A day? Is that all we got? A day? Or was it two days? Ah, son of a gun. The door slams open. Five men burst into the lab. I recognize them. The rounders. They aim their guns at us. I freeze. Despair seizes my heart. My worst fears have come true. It's happening exactly the same as before. Only this time, Suzuha isn't here to save us. Nobody move. Hands in the air. Even the dark-skinned man's words are the same. Eventually, the unpleasant clank or clack of heels echoes down the hallway. <laughs> Hello. We're taking the time machine. I suppress my terror and grab Mayuri's arm. Don't move. The crew cut man says something he hasn't said before. Makise Krisu, Okabe Rintaro, Hashida Itaru, the three of you will come with us. You cannot resist. Come with us. You have nowhere to run. We have men stationed throughout Akihabara. We didn't we didn't hear about the bomb threat this time, but I'm I'm gonna go ahead and assume that it still happened the same way. What do I do? Should I use my concealed mode snake right now? Use it and then time leap? But Mayuri hasn't been killed yet. There's a chance she might not be killed on this world line. Hey, you. The crew cut man points his gun at me. Her feet jumps up. Cold sweat breaks out all over my body. I said hands in the air. I've only raised my left. What are you hiding? To use it. <laughs> I swallow my fear and activate Mode Snake. White smoke instantly fills the room, rendering it impossible to see. The rounders won't be able to aim through this. I have to time leap while it lasts. I grab my Yuri's hand and fumble through the smoke toward the development room. Shoot them! Ow. 
not even worrying about hitting the time machine, I guess. And hear the sounds of guns wire firing wildly behind me. <laughs> Suddenly, my Yuri's arm gets heavy. I trip forward and land on my face. My Our hands were separated in the fall. I grope around and soon find her slender hand. My Yuri's feeble whisper reaches my ears. Was she hit? The rounder's blind shot hit my Yuri? It hurts. My Yuri's voice quickly fades away. Strength drains from her fingers. But my Yuri doesn't answer. I'm sorry, my Yuri. Once again, I failed to save you. I thought I'd succeeded, but I was wrong. I hear my teeth grinding in my head. I hear Krisu and Daru screaming as the gunfire continues. A sharp pain flares at the top of my head. I press down on it with my hand. It comes away soaked with blood. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It feels like someone took a saw to my skull. My ears are ringing. I stumble. I can't stand up straight. Hurry. I have to time leap. I squeeze my Yuri's limp hand one last time, then crawl to the development room. Fumble for the headgear and put it on. Point the remote at the hole, then press the power button. The TV turns on downstairs. I can hear people laughing on the screen. Target A. Target, C, Target, a. Target C secured. Shit. I clench my fists in frustration. The time leap machine is already activated. The discharge phenomenon is starting. The floor begins to shake. Once again, I leap to the past. Shucks. What do we do now? What do we do now? Man. I mean, I definitely didn't have the sense that Susa uh, going to the past and keeping her memories. I didn't get the sense that that was going to solve everything. But man. Now we seem to be trapped even more than we were in the past. Because I know they're not going to do something... They're not going to do something sort of like what I said in the past, which is to try and game the system where, you know, Okabe learns how to make the time leap machine, or... And he's able to get Karisu to make it earlier, and so he can jump back further and further each time. You know, they're, they're not going to do something like that. That feels like it would be too cheap for the story. But I just can't think of what what we would do next. I mean, it looks like 
I mean, we have to eventually figure out how divergence is being measured. Or rather, I should say, how... We need to learn the mystery behind reading Steiner, that's what I should say. But that's kind of vague. I, I don't know how we get out of the situation. What is what did Souza Hood do that brought that bought us two days? It, it was one or two days. Actually, probably just one day. It is. It's the fourteenth, the thirteenth, Friday the thirteenth. That was when it happened uh, before. How in the world did we just get one day? Okay. Well, I'm going to try and think about this. And I mean, maybe next time I'll have something, but I sincerely doubt it. <laughs> At this point, I just... Because uh, usually, being able to speculate says something, right? But... I, I just feel lost right now. Okay, let's let's call it here, but rather than just have me ramble for however long. Uh, I've been the warm. This has been Steins Gate. Uh, we're stuck again. <laughs> uh, hopefully next time we'll be able to figure out some path forward. Uh, hope to see you then. Bye-bye.